So this is Jeff Geiger with JGPolitics.com, and I'm here with uh, Mike Bluehair of Film the Police Portland. So, Mike, you've been doing this for how long? I've been doing this almost three years now. All right. Um, what what led you to decide you wanted to come out here and uh, film police? Well, a good friend of mine uh, and the mother of my godbaby, Carrie Armadina, was uh, filming a litter suspect, a black uh, teenage boy who was uh, prostrate on the ground. She was uh, quite a bit of ways away from him, and um, the police basically ran up on her and twisted her arm and stole her phone. And that uh, that story made uh, international news. It made uh, national news here in America. And Carrie and I sat back and uh, decided, what can we do to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen to people in the future? So uh, we had a two-pronged strategy. Carrie decided to go the legal route and sue the bastards. And I decided to found uh, Film the Police Portland, which is an activist group that goes out on the weekends and documents police behavior. It's a uh, keep the cops honest by filming them kind of thing. What would be like, what's the goal, I said, like, of uh, Film the Police Portland? Like, what do you want to see, like, come out? I want to educate this? people as, the, as, as to the simple fact that it's your First Amendment right to document film, uh, police encounters. And I would rather film something that's boring and innocuous, like a traffic stop, and nothing happened, than not film it, and then something happens, and then uh, no one's documented it. You know, I think it's a 21st century, and we, we all need to pull out our phones, and I want it to be a social norm that people document police encounters. So I know there's a criticism out there that you only uh, put up uh, negative encounters or encounters where they're arresting people. Is there a reason why you might not put up uh, positive encounters where they're helping somebody, even though I know you have some I put up quite a bit of material out there on the interweb, and if you look at my vast body of work, I would say that the majority of my videos are all innocuous when arrests aren't happening. Um, but, you know, if there's use of force, that's better to document it because maybe that person's lawyer needs it, you know? I mean, the camera protects uh, both both parties. I mean, the cops can't can't lie and say that you uh, you know you assaulted them or com uh, committed a crime which you didn't, and the citizens can't lie and say the cops hurt them as well. It, it works to it works for both parties. So if you're an officer out there and you think that police accountability or people filming you is a bad idea, I want you to think about it in this context. Uh, people can't lie and say what you were doing uh, wasn't what you were doing. So I, I think it works for both parties to, to protect the citizens and the, and the police as well. So that that's it. Is there anything you'd like to add that I haven't covered? Yeah, man. I think the point of all these police accountability organizations, whether it's uh, Cop Block or uh, Cop Watch or any of the others, is to turn this into a normative thing, meaning the average citizen should break out their phones or their cameras and document police encounters because I think it's very important. I think it's important to keep everyone honest, and that's why I do what I do. All right, this is Jeff Guy with JGPolitics.com. A bunch of men armed with OC spray, tasers, 9mm pistols, less lethal shotguns, AR-15s in their fucking trunks, and they're flipping out about me standing around with a camera. <laughs> I mean, really? Honestly? I mean, what, do they got to give every cop a fucking mini nuke? <laughs> just so they're not butt hurt, like, and terrified of the citizens. I don't think I'm conspiring with ISIS and this cute little kitty cat over here to plot the death and destruction of all officers. Well, I don't know. This cat looks kind of dangerous. <laughs>